Welcome to the channel. Thank you everyone for tuning in. So on today's video, I'm going to be doing the full review on this Thorn Vintage Diver inspired by the BB58. Now this video is following the recent unboxing I did on the channel where I unboxed four watches from AliExpress, making it my first AliExpress haul of 2023. Now in the comments section just after the video, a lot of you guys were very interested in seeing this watch being reviewed. And the main question a lot of you guys asked was how does it compare versus the San Martin version. Now, I never actually got to review the San Martin BB58 homage. However, I did review the 6800, I think, their vintage retro diver. Um, and plus, I've reviewed so many San Martin watches over the years and you know, over the time I've been on YouTube. So I have a good idea of where San Martin are and where this watch is in comparison. So this Thorn is available from a couple of stores, uh, but the store I chose had the cheapest price on this. So I'll definitely link that within the video description. Make sure to check them out. In terms of variations, you do have, I think, two main dial options uh, with this vintage uh, sort of coloration. You've got this one that you see here, the maxi dial with the snowflake style hands. You've also got the 369 dial with the Mercedes hands. Within that vintage range, I feel this is probably the nicest looking one. It's also dateless, but you also have a brushed steel silver bezel option, uh, which gives you a different dial uh, color. But I think they only come with a date wheel. Um, so yeah, some few interesting options. Now, I have to let you in on a little secret. I actually had this watch in before I had this watch in. Now let me explain. So the first time I saw this watch, I made an AliExpress video where I you know, showed you guys the link and the pictures. Now I also went offline and I purchased a modding case from one of the modding stores. Uh, you can definitely find it if you just look just, just a bit harder. And I found the exact same case or what I thought was the exact same case. So let me go ahead and introduce the case that I bought. Now this was for my own modification. Um, I had an idea in the back of my mind on how I wanted to mod this watch and this watch took me maybe three or four weeks to complete because I had to get all the right parts together. I managed to get a Fathoms dial and some uh, rose gold SKX style hands. I'm not a huge fan of the thorn hands um, but the point of this is that you know I had the case in hand before and I can say from the get-go that this case is amazing. In fact the bracelet is also the same as you get from the thorn. Um, I'll just put it on this version you know, because they are an absolute pain to resize so I didn't want to really mess around with a brand new bracelet and cause all sorts of damage. Um, but yeah the case is amazingly well made. Uh, the quality is there the bezel is crisp uh, and I like everything around it. I mean, with this mod, I used an NH38 and just to kind of match that dateless configuration um, because I am looking for, you know, some dateless watches as of late. Yeah, so this case is awesome. So I knew that and I just wanted to confirm by getting that Thorn Diver in, you know, there is a small chance that it's a totally different watch, you know, coming from AliExpress. So now that we've got that out of the way, Let's go into this Thorn Diver. Um, I'll put up the specifications and dimensions on screen. I'll cover them in the unboxing. Um, the only thing significant to mention from these specs, you, this does come with an AR-coated box style sapphire crystal, which looks awesome with that style of watch. In terms of dimensions, this is a 39 millimeter case on the calipers. However, the bezel does protrude slightly. So just the case is actually 38. Now coupled with a very compact lock to lock of just 46 millimeters, this makes this watch wear incredibly well on wrist. So let's have a look at the dial, you know, how, what kind of dial have Thorne given us. Now this dial, as you can see, it is a matte effect. Um, and what I like with this dial in particular is that it's a very rich black. It's not that washed out gray dial. Um, and I believe it's a dial that San Martin used on this. So this is, you know, got good coloration. Um, which really brings out that black and it really helps those markers stand out against that dark background. Now, the, what Thorn have done with this dial, it's mainly printed. You have the Thorn logo just below the 12 and some text above the 6. Um, we've seen this dial before. It's nothing absolutely new. Maxi style dial, as I said, but they have upgraded the Thorn logo. Uh, and prior to this model, the previous Thorn logo was like handwritten script. Um, whereas this is, you know, a bit more gothic script and they've gone with a very recognizable logo just above that thorn. Um, I'm not too sure I like that. It's not too different from the Tudor Rose, uh, but it's definitely a nod in that direction. Um, but the printing is crisp. Now the hour markers, even though they are printed, you've got layered loom application. Handset is a polished gold snowflake style handset. Uh, polished very nicely, but of course this being... Uh, a watch which has been assembled in China. What you'll find on the close-ups, you'll find a couple of very light micro scratches on the handset. So on the hour hand, there's a little one there and also on the seconds hand. Now it's not really visible to the naked eye. However, on camera, you know, everything does show up. But 
other than that, the dial is very clean. I don't see any specks of dust. Um, you know, normally you do see a bit of debris and dust on these dials, but that's fine. Um, also on the handset, they've got great proportions. I think the length is just perfect. The minute hand hits that minute track and so does that seconds hand. Uh, and the quality of the hand is okay. And the loom applied on there matches the loom on the dial really well. And that's another observation where on a lot of these vintage style watches, you'll find mismatch in loom color and shade used. And if you look at the bezel insert, the hour markers on the dial and the hands, it is pretty evenly matched. I'd say on the hands, it's just slightly creamier but that's just ever so slight. It doesn't really come across as a huge difference. Uh, and the bezel insert has got very crisp uh, painting. So these markers here are engraved on the actual bezel and they've been filled in with this paint. And it has been done really well, very crisp and very clean. Now in terms of the bezel itself, it is a coin edge bezel. Uh, it gives you relatively good grip um, considering it is quite thin and the rotation, 120 click, The resistance is okay uh, there's no wobble or play in the actual bezel but you can definitely feel it, it uses a very short uh, spring uh, tensioner which gives you this sort of clicking sound so usually those springs do give a somewhat inconsistent feel to the bezel um, and what you do get you get like light little snapback uh, where you feel the spring tension but that's okay as long as they do line up so let's bring this back around once again And that does line up pretty well. Now, another thing with that bezel using that system that they use, you do get uh, slightly a bit more resistance. It does feel slightly gritty at times as well. It's not as smooth as you'd probably like it or as I probably like it. I do like my bezels very smooth um, and a bit more tactile. Uh, but this is actually pretty decent, especially for the price. Now, let me flash up the loom shot and instantly you can see the loom application is great. There's plenty on those hour markers, plenty on the hands. The handset is just a touch brighter than the uh, actual dial, which is pretty common. Um, but overall, they applied really well. I don't see any patchiness there. Longevity wise, you know, this vintage 14 loom doesn't last as long as, you know, the normal C3. However, it's at a very good level. Uh, it will be visible in the dark for at least a fair few hours. Um, so, you know, it's much better than the you know competition that I've seen. In terms of San Martin, I'd say it is pretty similar. So, so far, you know, on the dial bezel, uh, you know, in comparison to San Martin and the quality I've seen of theirs, I'd say there's no difference in terms of the quality of the dial. I'd say this thorn is probably a bit better. San Martin do use those grayed out dials. The loom, I'd say, is definitely on par um, and the printing and everything else is okay. On the bezel side of things, San Martin definitely have a much better bezel. Um, you know, if we say San Martin is a 10, this thorn performs at a strong 7. Uh, but bear in mind with that, mechanism they use there will be some inconsistencies in that so your model might be better or worse and now moving on to the main aspect of this watch which i think is the case and the finishing which a lot of you guys are going to be looking forward to um it is that good uh, starting off with those end links female end links uh fit and finish is awesome um they fit in the case really well very tight tolerances there and move on to the finishing uh very fine satinized brushing in a vertical fashion matching those vertically brushed links uh very soft and then you'll of course you see that beveled polished highlight which goes along the side of that case profile um very beautifully done clean cut transitions that's what i like to see the side of the case has been finely brushed in a horizontal way um, and just have a closer look at those very clean and sharp transitions um, so yeah, in terms of the case quality definitely it is where san martin is uh, and of course a lot of the times these brands they may use the same factory and I think thorns just come into undercut San Martin, uh, but it's just that they don't have the same level of visibility. Now, crown and crown function, the crown is sterile, polished. Um, I've got no issues with that. In fact, because I modded mine, I much prefer sterile, you know, crowns, case backs, etc. Um, the function itself, it is very smooth. Um, in comparison to the previous thorn models I've seen, you know, the crowns weren't that smooth as they are on this model, but it's got a very positive pop. Um, uh, and yeah it works really well the movement in this is a seiko nh35 even though it's a dateless setup um you can feel the date click uh which they've left the date disc in there so you do have a ghost position now in comparison to nh38 i think if they bought enough they would be as cheap as nh35 now if you were to go on aliexpress yourself pick up an nh35 or nh38 i think the price difference is maybe eight or ten dollars so i think for that price difference for a for a customer like us it's definitely worth going for the NS38 and then I think this watch would have been just at the top um, of its game 
case back is pretty normal uh, you've got some circular brushing um, it is of course fully sterile now if i can get some zoom on it there you go uh, you've got the coin edge case back um, pretty easy to take off as well you can use a rubber silicon ball on there uh, and the bracelet now is well made as well um, you don't really feel that this watch is that much cheaper um, you've got fully brushed links uh, and these are all actual five link bracelets so those side links are actually separate um, this is a full-on rivet style bracelet so you've got screws on one end and closed off rivets on the other polished either side a very fine brushing um, that's exceptionally done you know uh, looking at the price point this is going to start to raise some questions again on san martin's pricing in comparison to what thorn have given us um very nice female end links on there polished sides as i said absolute pain in the back side to size and even though i get some commenters or subs some subscribers saying you know it's very easy or take you to a watchmaker it really isn't guys i mean it's gonna be hit and miss uh, it all depends on the level of loctite used and you know how the screws are uh, i had a lot of trouble with my one um as i normally do with these i don't look forward to them at all um, and I caused a bit of damage to the bracelet links. Um, nothing that I can see right now, uh, but you can see one here. I think I chipped a bit or caused a bit of damage there. But it's going to happen. I think it's easier if you were to use a little blowtorch uh, just on the links because that helps melt some of the Loctite, therefore making it a bit easier. Moving on to the clasp, I think this is where one of Thorne's weaknesses is. It's only a two micro adjust clasp, meaning you have to leave the bracelet quite loose or quite tight, uh, depending on your wrist size. For my particular wrist size, that is exactly the case. This wears quite a bit looser. Um, sterile, fully brushed, nice beveled polished edges, but only two micro adjusts. This definitely should have had um, a dive watch clasp. Um, and, you know, not too dissimilar to San Martin's one. However, you know, you can go ahead and buy San Martin's clasp um, if you were to get this watch because it's that cheap. You know, you can afford to kind of put a bit of money into upgrade it just to make it like, you know, the perfect watch for yourself. Build internals, of course all solid links um, solid end links uh, as i already showed you guys the fit and finish is absolutely incredible uh, so let's put this on wrist and let's see how it looks so here's this thorn bb58 vintage diver on my six and a half inch wrist and i love how comfortable it is and the fact that the case is actually 38 with a 39 bezel with that very compact 46 millimeter log to log is awesome when transferred on a six and a half inch wrist the bracelet is very smooth and soft no sharp edges in sight i think it's a perfect fit for a six and a half inch wrist and definitely be a great fit for wrists that are a lot bigger um yeah i mean i've said all i could say about it the finishing is on point uh, the dial setup is great if you even if you want to stick to the thorn branding and the thorn dial and it's not something you want to modify the bezel is okay it's not its strongest point but it's also not its weakest point crown awesome again um loom great the bracelet personally i, don't, I hate these links uh but the bracelet is finished nice enough really well done uh, and the weakest point on this is just the clasp and all that coupled with the you know very low price of what 140 dollars 115 to 117 pounds um this watch is absolutely awesome uh definitely you do not need the san martin version um i don't think you have that much to gain the only thing you're gonna probably gain is just maybe a slightly better bracelet you know being the clasp and i know they did go away from this rivet style bracelet and they gave us uh, i think a normal three link brush bracelet um so yeah you're not gonna miss out on much at all uh you know having this in hand i don't wish i had the san martin at all um and thorn have definitely smashed this out of the park um but just please bear in mind the couple of things which i said which is going back to the bezel inconsistency maybe um and the fact that you know it's probably wise to get a different clasp i haven't gone with a different clasp i've just chose to stick with it i do like the way it finished off the bracelet great profile and i've just got a bit of a looser watch which i can totally deal with um so yeah that's it for my review on this thorn bb58 definitely caught me off guard they've just come out the blue with it uh and i think as a watch goes you know regardless of the brand this is something you guys need to get if you like this style uh i personally would go ahead and mod it which is what i've done but i would also recommend just going for this thorn you know, getting a fully built watch and that way you only have to you know replace the dial in the hands or movement if you want to go down the nh38 route um so that's it from me today guys i hope you find that very informative uh thank you for watching and i'll see you on the next video Thank you.